it's bigger on the inside. So today we're going to talk about Tim Group's new line of SSDs. These are two and a half inch SSDs uh, that I have in my hand. This happens to be a one terabyte. They do also have uh, NVMe drives and a, and a few other things. Basically, they're coming out with a new line that they're trying to gear toward the people that they want. You know, if you still got a spinning disk in your machine, they're trying to, to make sure that they convert you over to a solid state. And one of the easiest way to do that is, um, in some cases, just to offer something for a little bit lower price that you would think would be maybe a little bit lower speed, but with this, not really the case. Uh, the EX2 line is actually going to be taking, I guess, taking the place out of uh, from the GX2 or GX1 and GX2, which offered you between 500 and 520 or so, 530 uh, megabytes of read speed and about 500 of write speed. This animal right here is rated for 500. Uh, let me get it in the screen. There we go. This little animal right here is rated for about 550 on the read and about 520 on the write. So overall, uh, a really really good deal there. Uh, and it only cost me 90 bucks for for one terabyte. The um, they do have an e a CX one and CX two models that are supposed to be a little bit lower speed at a lower price for the entry level to try to you know move those people into an SSD instead of the the spinning disk hard drive. And the only no, thing I've really noticed the difference between the CX the CX one and CX two seems to be the way that the uh, the NAND or the modules are stacked. Uh, one of them is like 128, 256, 512, and so on. And the other one is like uh, 250, 500, one, get, uh, one terabyte. And they seem to be stacked a little bit different. But um, the speeds and everything did look consistent, and so I didn't really notice a difference past that, even similarly priced. They also do have in this line the QX model. Now, that QX comes in a 15.3 terabyte model, 15.3 terabytes. That's huge, that's, large, that's larger than some uh, data transferring or some backup, say Western Digital Reds or anything like that that you might use for a NAS drive. 15.3 um, terabytes is a huge, huge amount and that truly would be bigger on the inside. Uh, anyway, so we're gonna take a look at this. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and compare this SSD to uh, a couple of other SSDs that I already do have. We're also going to compare it to a regular spinning disk hard drive, a very good one, a 7200 speed Western Digital, and we're going to go ahead and compare it to an NVMe. Now this comparison is not to say this is a good drive or a bad drive or anything like that. It's just to give you an idea of what kind of speeds we're talking about. Because even though this was rated for 550 megabytes write, or 550 megabytes read, and about 520 megabytes write, uh, it actually did a little bit better than that. Okay, so the first one we are going to take a look at, obviously, is the team group. Um, when I went ahead and ran these, I ran these in Crystal Disk Mark 8, which is a standard download. You can download it and you can run it on pretty much any drive uh, that you want to. And it's advertised as 550 megabytes read and 520 write. Uh, and what I found out that, you know, after running this several times, and I'm finally just going ahead and, and you can see even on this test, uh, it was five runs, but I ran it a couple of different times. And I got anywhere from about 558 to 560 as a read and 520, 525 to about 530 as a write. So much, much better than what they, well, I'm not going to say much, much better, but it's better than advertised. And I think it was, you know, pretty good indication of what's to come here. The reason why this is important is because, like I said, I paid under $100 for a one terabyte drive. So you, you can't really do that that often. The next one we're going to look at is the Inland Premium. Uh, this is usually Micro Center's brand, but you can get this online and a few other places as well. And you can get it on Amazon. I'm, I'm pretty sure you can get it on Newegg as well. Uh, this does say that it's up to 510 read and up to 500, 450 write. But as you can see, the Inland, uh, the one I've got, it's actually 256. Again, I ran this test several times. This is about the average of what I got. It fell just a little bit shorter what the advertised price was or the advertised specs. Uh, which says up to, it doesn't say it has to meet that, it says up to, which is why I was kind of surprised that the team group actually was a little bit higher than this. Uh, the Samsung Evo Pro, 
the 860 Evo, and I believe now there's a, a, an 870 and a 970 and all that. So Samsung is always a solid drive. Shouldn't be surprised that these numbers are like this. And like I said, we were only looking at the first sequential number, the first set of sequential numbers. But a 563 and a 536, again, that was pretty typical. It did run a little bit faster than the team group EX2. Then again, this did cost me more for this drive. It cost me... Um, this was a 500 gig drive, and I believe at the time it cost me 64 or $65 to buy. And now they're still running, probably a, still a right around that price range. You can buy it for just a little over $100 for one terabyte. So it's no real surprise that this is a pretty good drive. Uh, the 970s and all that, I'm sure would be a little bit more expensive. To kind of match it up and look at what your basic hard drive is, and this is the reason why Team Group is trying to get people, they're cutting the price down a little bit, giving you a good product, and trying to move people from these spinning disc platters. Because as you can see, we're talking about probably close to well, like four times the performance of a hard drive, an HDD. So that means if you're taking two minutes to load Windows up on your PC, you're going to cut that down to about 25, 30 seconds on an SSD, even a two and a half inch SSD. So something that's a SATA 3 is going to take you, both of these are SATA 3s, but the, the Western Digital is going to take you about four times longer than this team group will. So again, just as a reference, this isn't kind of a comparison or anything, but this two terabyte Western Digital runs at 7,200 RPM. It's a good premium quality. It's a high quality HDD. So it's one of your, one of your faster, more responsive HDDs and still falls way behind your standard SSD. Taking a look then, we're going to go ahead and the SanDisk Extreme Pro just for kind of, uh, like I said, a comparison. This is your typical N NVMe. This happens to be a very, very high quality, very fast NVMe, uh, but not the fastest on the market. Now, you have some PCI 4.0s that will easily double this. They'll easily get up between five and 7,000 as far as the, uh, the megabytes transfers. And uh, for an NVMe like this, the, the, just the regular PCI 3.0, uh, it does still out, outweigh the team group by about five or six times. But you can still, looking at that team group, you do get to see that it's pretty solid. We're talking about something that goes over a normal SATA cable instead of being plugged right into your motherboard where it automatically or has a lot less latency and a lot quicker uh, talk time to say your cpu or in some cases coming up now the pci4 i believe with uh some of the architecture coming up with and being displayed on windows 11 will mean that your ssd your nvme drive and your graphics card will soon be able to transfer data between themselves without having to go through the cpu so it'll get even faster uh, a, a drive like this will not work with that but you can see that um, for the price this ends up being a, a pretty decent drive and you, you you can't beat one terabyte for 90 bucks and i believe i even saw it on sale for 84 or 85 dollars and um so not not really bad so basically what I was doing here is I was trying to make sure that if they're going to advertise and say, hey, look, this is a premium drive at a low cost. I want to make sure that it was indeed a premium drive at a low cost. That means if they're going to tell me that it's, it's going to read 550 megabytes or it's going to write 520 megabytes, that I want to make sure that's what it was actually doing. And I was pretty pleased with the fact that it, it not only did that on all the tests I ran, but it exceeded that on all the tests I ran. So uh, in my opinion, solid drive. Uh, the reason why I picked this drive up is not just because I needed a, a one terabyte SSD. I, I do or I don't. I do have other spinning drives and all that. But because it is a low power option, it was inexpensive, and it's a fairly high capacity, that helps me out in a lot of phases. And you're thinking, but Paul, why, why do you need another one if you already have that, that other stuff? And well, quite simply, because I'm going to do something I shouldn't be doing. And I'm going to go back to the HP pre-built that I worked on before and do a modification I've got no business doing. Uh, I, I batted around with this a little bit and I thought, okay, I'll just find me a low power GPU to go in that HP pre-built. And then I couldn't find one because the GPU market, we know the GPU market right now is a complete mess unless I buy something horrible, which is going to be less performance than what it already has with that 4600G. And so I thought the next best thing, well, maybe what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and buy a bigger power supply. Now, I can get a hold of another power supply for about $100, 
but that almost defeats the purpose of spending only a couple of bucks here or there to upgrade something and maybe show HP what they could have done with this instead. So what I'm going to do, I've already got uh, on hand, I've already got a GTX 1650 Super, which turns out only takes about 80 to 100 watts of power. It's got 180 watt power supply in the HP. Um, the CPU is only using about 65 watts, so between 35 and 65 watts. So all told, if I do this right and I can use a SATA adapter on that GPU, then I might be pulling about 150, 145, 150 watts by the time all is said and done, and I need something fairly low power to go in it. So uh, if if I can get some a low power solution for that, and this turns out to be the animal, then we're going to go with it. But stay tuned for that because, like I said, I'm going to do something I got no business doing and something that I just I don't I don't feel is particularly safe. In most cases but the PCI lane the, the PCIe 16 times lane uh, pulls about 75 watts of power the SATA cables can handle about 50 watts and that GPU only pulls a total of about a hundred so I it will cover it I just don't know if the power supply will hold up so we're gonna have to stay tuned but this is gonna help me do that so between the two of them I'll have a, the NVMe drive that's already in it I'll have this new SSD and we'll see what we can tear up. Uh, and then, yeah, like I said, don't forget, that's coming up. So if you don't mind, go ahead and hit that red button down there and subscribe so you'll know when that happens. But it's probably going to happen pretty soon here. And in the meantime, uh, I'm going to enjoy playing and testing this out. Do folks, uh, uh, not, this isn't sponsored by Team Group or anything, but take a look at those. If you're in the market for an SSD and you're not looking to break the bank on it, um, I would look at the maybe the CX-1 or CX-2 line. The EX2 line is supposed to be high performance for a lower price. And if you're looking for high capacity, you might look at that QX line. Uh, Team Group just put these out recently. Uh, I was able to order it straight away. And uh, I, got no, I got no doubt at all there's going to be reviews coming up. So mine might be one of them, but I'm pretty happy with it. And it is better than advertised speeds on the box. So if you have any doubts at all, that's where you're going to go, go, you're going to go well. Uh, I think it works out just fine. So until the next time, folks, that's all I got for right now. Don't forget to visit me on the other socials. Hit uh, like if you liked it. If you didn't like it, you know, hit you know dislike, but kind of let me know what I'm doing wrong so I can fix it in the future. But in the meantime, um, yeah, just uh, hold out and wait, and we'll we'll discover this together, okay? And then until then, I'll see you later.